Many people enjoy the sight of rain, and some don't even pay attention to it. But if you are the US military, you see the water that comes from the sky not as rain, but as a possible weapon that could be used during warfare. Clouds form when super cold water vapor condenses and freezes onto particles such as dust, ash, and other ice particles forming what are called ice nuclei. Since water vapor cannot form into ice nuclei until about negative 40 degrees Celsius, water molecules use these solids or seeds to form into ice at much lower temperatures. Cloud seeding takes advantage of this property of super cold water vapor as it essentially adds more solids into the cloud for the super cold water vapor to condense and turn into ice. Cloud seeding was discovered in 1946 by Vincent Schaefer while researching aircraft icing at General Electric Laboratories. Mr. Schaefer would use a cooling chamber kept below freezing to create artificial clouds to conduct experiments. On July 13, 1946, Mr. Schaefer came into work and noticed that his cooling chamber had been turned off, so he put a block of dry ice to recool the chamber faster. As soon as he put the dry ice into the chamber and breathed, he noticed a blue haze formed around the dry ice along with millions of ice crystals. Mr. Schaefer soon realized he had discovered a way to change super cold water droplets into ice crystals. I would like to take you into the laboratory and show you a few of the experiments that led us to our outdoor experiments in converting clouds into snow. Using a home freezing unit such as this, which has a temperature of around zero Fahrenheit, we can form supercool clouds just like those in the natural atmosphere by breathing into the box. The moist air from the breath condenses and forms a cloud. And this cloud cools to a temperature of about zero degrees Fahrenheit in a few seconds. Any moist thing placed in this box will produce such a cloud. By putting this cloud in the chamber, we can then do various things to it to see whether or not we can convert this supercooled cloud to snow. This cloud is made up of liquid water droplets. They are not snow crystals as yet, but by taking a tiny piece of dry ice such as this and scratching it so a few tiny fragments fall into the supercooled cloud, long streaks develop just like the vapor trail from an airplane. These contain millions and millions of tiny submicroscopic snow crystals which grow very fast and assume exactly the same forms that natural snowflakes uh, show in an ordinary snowstorm. The particles grow very fast. About a month later, Mr. Schaefer's colleague, Dr. Bernard von Gutt, began to experiment with silver iodide. He discovered that silver iodide also seeded super cold water vapor, but in a different way than what Mr. Schaefer had discovered. Mr. Schaefer's method of seeding super cold water vapor relied on the dry ice's super cold temperature to condense the water vapor into ice. But Dr. Von Gutt's method of seeding with silver iodide relied on the substance's chemical structure, which is very similar to ice. The first attempt to seed a cloud was on November 13, 1946 in upstate New York. Mr. Schaefer and pilot Curtis Talbot were able to cause snow to fall near Mount Greylock in western Massachusetts after they dumped six pounds of dry ice 14,000 feet above a four mile long cloud. Although the snowfall was insignificant, this was a big step forward in weather modification. During the late 1940s, many experiments were carried out over the New Mexico desert. Mr. Schaefer dubbed the operation Project Cirrus. They experimented with dry ice, silver iodide, and even frozen water. These experiments reportedly started dozens of rainstorms, with one releasing about 200 billion gallons of water. During the Vietnam War, the United States was searching for yet another unconventional way to gain a tactical advantage over the Viet Cong, so they looked at cloud seeding. The main goal with cloud seeding in Vietnam was to prolong the monsoon season, softening roads, causing landslides, and washing out river crossings. 
The first use of cloud seeding in Vietnam was in August of 1963 by the CIA during anti-DM regime demonstrations. One former CIA agent said in an interview, they would just stand around during demonstrations when the police threw tear gas at them, but we noticed that when the rains came, they wouldn't stay. Through the early to mid 1960s, cloud seeding was experimented on on a strip of the Laos panhandle without the Laos government knowing about the project or its goals. The results of these experiments were deemed 85% successful, giving President Lyndon Johnson the confidence to expand the cloud seeding operations to the Ho Chi Minh Supply Trail in 1967. The Ho Chi Minh Supply Trail was a major military supply route used by the Viet Cong forces to infiltrate troops into southern Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos during the Vietnam War. The trail is a complex web of smaller trails, pathways, and roads that stretch from northern Vietnam, crossing through Laos and Cambodia, and branching into southern Vietnam. On March 17, 1967, the United States assigned three C-130As and two F-4C Phantoms to the 54th Weather Recon Squadron to carry out Operation Popeye. A few days later, on March 20th, the first cloud seeding flights began over the eastern half of the Laotian Panhandle. The 54th Weather Recon Squad designated the missions as motor pool, as the intentions of the mission was to create undrivable and harsh terrain for the Viet Cong to maneuver. In July of that year, the operation was expanded to include portions of far western North Vietnam, and in September, the A Shao Valley was added. On April 1, 1968, cloud seeding operations over North Vietnam were halted after bombing restrictions were put into place. The southern region of North Vietnam was added to the operational area in September of 1968, then removed shortly after a halt of conventional bombings in November of that year. In March 1971, reporter Jack Anderson published a story concerning the highly secretive rainmaking operations over Vietnam. Of course, the Nixon administration denied knowing anything about any such operations taking place, but the Pentagon Papers pretty much debunked this. On July 3, 1972, the New York Times published a very detailed article about Operation Popeye. Then, coincidentally, all rainmaking operations were officially cancelled a few days after the publications of the article on July 5th, two days after the New York Times article. The press's stories and pressure from the public led Congress to frantically pass legislation in 1974 banning all use of weather control for war. And on the 10th of December 1976, the whole world came to an agreement to ban the use of all weather modification for warfare. Cloud seeding is used nowadays to increase precipitation in places where drought was prevalent, and it is also used to suppress the formation of hailstones and thunderstorms. Cloud seeding is even used in ski resorts to keep the snow going year-round, and it is also used in popular tourist spots like Dubai, where rain is scarce. In 2011, Alan Robach, a climate researcher, got a mysterious call from two associates who were consultants for the CIA. They were asking if we can detect if another country is controlling our climate. This mysterious phone call made some question if weather modification is still being used today for nefarious reasons. Climate science has advanced so much since the mid-20th century, so who knows what is possible in terms of modern-day weather modification.